hopping and friendos. Welcome back to the Tropical Garage. My name's Troy, and today we have an exceptionally long hardscape video. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna do any sort of intro besides this, so stay tuned, and we'll see you there. Okay, getting started, you can see here that I built an egg crate riser out of the black egg crate. I held everything together with zip ties, and I've got some sponge filter mat that I've cut into really thin strips. This is just going to be the barrier between the land area or under the land area and the water area. And of course, I just use zip ties once again to secure this mat to the egg crate. And uh, I just did this all the way down. And the reason I did the egg crate riser instead of just doing sponge filter mat for the entire land area the tanks that I used sponge filter mat as the substrate and drainage layer in tanks that had a water feature, I was having issues with cyanobacteria. So uh, here you can see I'm marking my line just in case I move that riser. And here we have some waterfall boxes that are siliconed in place. I held the line up with zip ties and suction cups. Since this paludarium is four feet tall, I wanted to limit the amount of sagging from the weight of the wood as much as possible. So I gave them some sort of structure to bite into. Um, in this case, it's egg crate and the foam will bite into this and kind of have something to stick to. And the silicone bonds to glass significantly better than foam bonds to glass. So um, silicone this up and tape it in place let it dry for 12 to 24 hours and uh, then you're pretty much ready to, to begin foaming as you can see here i already started foam, foaming before i started filming um, and then i remembered i gotta film for you guys so here it is and now it's time to start foaming i should mention that i'm using the great stuff pond and stone black foam um, being this is a paludarium and is going to have a significant amount of water, I figured I would go the safest route where the product actually s says that it's safe for fish and ponds. Uh, so, yes, and you can also see here that I'm laying it in a vertical orientation. Um, because the tank is upright and I'm not setting it on its back or sides due to its size, I didn't feel like asking for help just to move the tank around. Um, you can lay foam this way, you just need to go up and down. For the first layer and then after the first layer is cured you can add more layers on top of it and do whatever you feel but for the first layer you need to just go up and down once you're done foaming it's time to start carving the background and the tools i'm going to be using are a uh, impact driver drill and also a wire brush attachment for the drill and this makes a huge mess but i do think time wise it's very fast and I think you get a great result so um, I also noticed on this build that you, with using the impact driver the drill doesn't seem to jump around as much um, than with the standard drill and I also noticed that the orientation of the way the drill is spinning has something to do with the way the drill is going to jump um, you'll see me here frequently in this little clip um, kind of go back and forth from the drill spinning clockwise or counterclockwise After about an hour of carving and two hours of cleaning up the shavings, this is the result that you should have something that looks like this. Uh, I'm really happy with this texture and uh, I really like the black foam to be honest too. Um, I just think it looks cool and it's going to be less to cover up. So 
Um, it's a little more expensive, but I definitely like the effect. And even though we did the structures underneath the foam to stick to the glass, I still wanted to go around the edge here. And I used the black silicone this time just because if you use the black silicone, you don't need to really cover it up with anything. The dry lock sticks to it in some spots, um, but you, it's not like it's clear and you'll see through it or anything. So um, I use the black to seal this edge just to ensure that background never lifts off the glass. Now this next tip I'm going to show you is an idea I got from some of the aquascapers that use this trick to hold rocks together when they're building their scape. Um, you're going to need some super glue, the liquid form, not the gel, and some cotton balls. And uh, you just place some cotton in between the two pieces of wood you're trying to attach and uh, just let that super glue run down the sides. You maybe need to hold this piece of wood in place for about 10 seconds um, and it will start to kind of smoke um, and that means that it's working. And you can add some more cotton um, and give it some more surface area for the wood and the glue and the cotton balls to bond to just for a stronger uh, you know, form where it's not just going to fall off if you hit it with your finger. Um, this is on there really, really good. Uh, you can see here it's smoking right there. Um, don't worry, it's not going to catch on fire. Um, if you're super worried about it, you can spray it with water and it will stop that, uh, process, that chemical process from going on. Cyanacolade super glue is safe for fish um, and animals. So once it's cured, it dries inert. Um, and you can see here I'm going to add another piece. There was just uh, that piece. I didn't like how static the... It was just like two little pieces there. I didn't like how it was kind of even, so I wanted to make it more asymmetrical. And I added another little piece of wood here, and I'm doing the same process. This is by far my favorite tip or trick that I've learned in I don't know how long. Um, what I also was using this method for was setting up the woodscape on the foam. Um, it will it also bonds to the foam so there's no need for duct tape anymore or having things prop up the wood literally a little tiny piece of cotton and some super glue and it will melt or basically connect to that foam now I don't know how permanent that connection would be but um, just until I actually foam them in place you know it could probably stay overnight or you know weeks or months um, as long as water didn't come in contact with it I've heard that water can weaken the, the connection there but I'm just using it for temporary to keep it in place while I foam it in place and you can see here that this entire hardscape at this point is held together with super glue and cotton balls and a lot of these pieces are very high stress pieces like they want you know they want to fall but the super glue holds them in place and really sturdy as well, I might say. Now, this is not permanent. Um, you could pull it off if you want and rearrange stuff and try it in a different orientation, but I'm happy with this. So uh, I think it's time that I'm gonna lock it down with the foam and fill in all the you know, nooks and crannies. And we're gonna go ahead and start foaming. Again, I'm using the Great Stuff Pond and Stone black foam um, and uh, yeah you're just gonna go ahead and get in behind any nooks and crannies or crevices or areas where the frogs could get behind and potentially get stuck um, you know I know people like to give them as many hiding spots as possible so they can feel safe and secure but at the same rate you do not want them to be able to get stuck somewhere and not get out because I've had that happen and it sucks so Yep, we're just going to go around and foam each side and top and bottom and every little crevice that we can think of for every piece of wood that I have in this scape. So, um, you don't want to watch me do that or it would get terribly boring. So I'm just showing you on a few pieces of wood here. Um, also, there's like, you know, I had this ledge here, kind of, and this cave, if you will. Uh, sorry about the fan noise. It's like four degrees out and my heater is going to keep kicking on and I'm not going to freeze myself and the frogs just to have a crisp, clear audio for you guys. So you're going to have to deal with the fan noise every once in a while. 
but uh, here you can see I'm using the drill process again to kind of carve a waterfall um, you can see there's the little waterfall box at the top of the screen and I'm just using that that brush with an extension um, to kind of create a ditch or waterfall and I kept this little clip in here because you can see my drill brush attachment has finally broke <laughs> so I got a new one though and uh, you know this is what happens so um, once you've got everything recarved again all around the pieces of wood and everything's looking neat and tidy or up to your liking uh, it's time to vacuum all that crap off again <laughs> and this is how the hardscape looks with all the wood foamed in place I have not done all the waterfalls at this point I just kind of carved that one so you'll see here coming up um, I still have to carve those but just to show you how it looks as far as uh, the detail um, you can see there's still some of the white patches with the cotton and super glue I'm gonna cover those with silicone or um, dry lock so but it's a pretty cool um, hardscape at this point it's a little busy or busier I should say than most of my hardscapes but um, being that I've got to tie into four different waterfalls it sort of has to be busy but um, I think plants are gonna hide a lot of the busyness that are going on and it should be a successful hardscape at least I'm hoping so and here's some more detailed shots of waterfall areas that are going to be there and uh, as I was filming I had a visitor come in the frog room you want to talk to the camera uh, hi, say, say hi e. say hi hey that of course was my son Max I think that's the first time you guys have seen him on camera so getting back to the build uh, I'm starting to work on the waterfalls as far as siliconing them and covering them and you know working with the water flow testing that out seeing how it's going to be or getting an idea for it before I add silicone so um, yeah I just kind of made some barriers and now I'm just doing a test dumping some water and I like that I think that looks pretty cool and uh, you know the other waterfall are just gonna they're kind of gonna flow right into the water it's not gonna drip like that so I think that's a nice little change of pace there um, I, this is the side it's you know when it's all siliconed it'll run right off into the water nice and smooth um, and then the third waterfall up here I really like the way it cascades there right in the middle and then it's sort of going to drip down that piece of wood and run off once all that siliconed again um, it'll run off right into the water so that should be a really cool look and the last waterfall I really didn't know what to do with um, so I ended up tying it into the right side waterfall um, so there'll be two waterfalls basically on that right side main focal point piece of piece of wood that kind of looks like a fallen log so uh, yeah and I'm using sponge filter mat to kind of make a, uh, a platform so I don't need to use a ton of foam I was getting a little low on foam here I used about uh, 20 22 cans total <laughs> So a lot of foam here, but it's a 300 gallon paludarium. So, you know, what do you expect? But uh, yeah, just foam it in place on the top and the bottom to cover up that sponge filter. And then I'll carve it back down and uh, silicone it and then see how the water runs off on that. And now it's time to start putting down some silicone to seal the edges to really lock the water down. Um, you know, so it pulls up in certain areas and doesn't really just run behind the pieces of wood or through the foam um, I mean it's not a problem if it does that but you know I kind of have an idea of how I want the water to flow so um, just trying to you know really seal make an edge um, so when the water does run down it goes the way I want it to so I've just taken uh, some regular uh, ASI clear silicone and uh, smoothed it out with you know wearing a glove of course and I just sprinkled down a couple, you know, small pieces of wood I had there. And uh, that's actually 
ADA Amazonia. I just had some leftover. I was like, you know, see how it looks. You know, just trying it out. So, um, it looks pretty cool. It's different, and I think it's it, it looks different from the other waterfalls, which is cool because that kind of looks natural. You know, if they all look exactly the same, it's gonna look you know fake and kind of dumb. Here, I'm just covering another waterfall. I'm using the black silicone on this one because I'm not going to be covering it the same way as the other one. I plan on using peat moss here to cover. So um, just do the same thing though. Lay down some silicone and smooth it out. Um, you want to make sure that you, on the waterfall box to the foam, that it's you know sealed with the silicone so that the water doesn't run behind the water, you know, behind the foam. So you want to make sure that when the water gets to the top, it you know rolls over that edge and runs down in a nice, nice smooth flow. I just said knife with a lisp. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, okay, it's late. It's uh, 4.49 in the morning. And uh, here I'm just showing you how I'm carving the sponge filter mat for the land area. Basically the bank where the water meets the land. Um, I created a bunch of different levels and heights to give them more of a naturalistic look. I don't like in paludariums when it's such an abrupt, you know, land to water straight line. So that's what I'm doing here. And now it's time to do the dry lock, which you guys have seen me do before. Um, that is the UGL dry lock in gray, just the original recipe or original form. Um, and then I mixed uh, some quickcrete color, uh, quickcrete cement colors with it. And I used buff and charcoal. Um, if you can find brown, brown's better because it's a darker color, but um, this works. I'm showing you here how I fade the two colors together. So I always start with the lighter color and then I just take small patches of the dark here and just kind of blend it right on the foam. Um, you know, basically like you're blending colors on a canvas. Uh, I guess maybe not all of you guys are painters like me, but uh, that's what I went to school for. So. Um, you know, blending colors is, I guess, kind of second nature to me, but I'm just showing you here, just take little dabs of it and then kind of, uh, you know, wipe off the brush and then go back and just kind of blend it all. And uh, you'll get lots of, you know, transitions from lighter brown to darker brown and um, what I think looks very natural. Here I'm just doing another waterfall, covering it with the silicone and the peat mix, um, just like I did previously. But uh, yeah, this is the last step. Basically, um, I had to wait for another tube of black silicone to come in, so I went ahead and dry locked the rest of the te the uh, background. But I didn't want to dry lock the waterfall. I wanted to leave that to the silicone. So um, that's it. We're done.
friendos. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I also hope that you like the background as much as I do. I think this one's going to be really cool when it's all planted and with the waterfalls running and the water in the bottom. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a really cool tank. So um, be sure to stay tuned for the fourth segment of this build, which is going to be all the aquascape stuff, um, which I know nothing about. So it could be a horrible disaster, but hopefully it's not. Hopefully I'm able to succeed with that as well. Um, but I guess we'll find out in that video. So be sure to stay tuned. Um, yeah, thanks guys. Enjoy. Goldberg, out.